You could call it the check back, or maybe the check in. Last year, back in 2022, the Vermont State Legislature passed a statute known as Act 106, which requires the Executive Director of Racial Equity, the Commissioner of Motor Vehicles, and the Commissioner of Public Safety to jointly examine all motor vehicle violations for the purpose of making recommendations on whether or not statute should be repealed, modified, or limited to secondary enforcement. In other words, are traffic laws working as intended, and are they being applied fairly? A series of five meetings was held around the state, in Hinesburg, St. Johnsbury, Putney, Arlington, and Brookfield, to hear from local citizens on that. We stopped by the Arlington Memorial High School for the session held there on Monday, October 30th, but whether it was due to the night before Halloween or a cold and rainy evening, our GINAT team was the only ones who showed up. Fortunately, the members of the panel, three state officials, plus Tabitha Moore, there to facilitate the discussion, were ready to talk about their work and what they had heard so far. So we have a legislative mandate that came out of 2022 for the Director of uh, Racial Equity, the Commissioners of Public Safety and the Department of Motor Vehicles. And they were tasked with looking at traffic statutes, so traffic laws, and doing a review and making recommendations on them. So making recommendations on whether they should be repealed or made secondary, or if they should be modified in some way. So we gathered a work group of a, of a whole lot of folks within those departments and others and we are working towards recommendations. And one of the pieces is getting the community's input on their experiences around traffic laws and any um, thing they want to share with us to help inform our recommendations. Um, I guess I just wondered, you know, was there something that prompted the study or uh, any kind of specific event or events or uh, was this built into the legislation in 2022 uh, that you have follow-up sessions or whatever? Yeah, the legislative history um, showed us that early on in the deliberation process, a big motivator for introducing this bill, um, which was H635 at the time, was really looking at the disparities that happen on roadways with traffic stops in Vermont. Um, folks will remember that the lead sponsor, Hal Colston, gave a very impassioned speech on the floor talking about things like driving while black, and just the general tenor of what it's like to be a motorist on the roads and to be experiencing disparate outcomes. So that was a driving factor that led to the initial introduction of the bill. Um, it's not quite how the bill turned out um, after all of the negotiation happens during the legislative session, but that was a big driver, no pun intended, of um, how it, it came to be. So what have you been hearing so far at, at the other three meetings that you had? Uh... It's really run the gamut. Um, we've heard people talk about everything from ecological concerns, like the health risks of air pollution and noise pollution. We've had folks tell us about the uh, tricky situations with insurance companies and having the right paperwork and documentation. Um, we've heard a lot about the discretion that officers have on the roads and the different ways that that plays out in different people's uh, outcomes. We've heard people tell us about um, faulty equipment and kind of sometimes it is uh, helpful to keeping everyone safe and, and sometimes it feels pretextual. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really been a wide variety. But I'd say even with that, even the different places of power and kind of influence into what traffic laws are enforced or not, and really wanting to have consistency across those. So there was talk about like inspection um, or like you were talking about with some of the, the uh, faulty equipment type things and what does that mean as a law enforcement officer when it feels like it's a little bit gray even. And so how can this opportunity be used to tighten those things up as well? That's been a recurring theme is the vehicle inspections, condition of vehicle. Um, a lot of the citizens have legitimate concerns that um, it seems a bit of a poor tax, basically, to um, a lot of poverty in Vermont. It's very expensive to maintain maintain vehicles, but there's also safety concerns with that as well. So. Um, I'm curious, Dan, just to, uh, just to um, one of the things uh, 
I've been hearing anyway, and I'm sure everybody else is here too, is that uh, law enforcement uh, agencies, state police uh, are kind of stretched thin. There is not enough coverage. I mean, does that somehow impact uh, some of the, some of this bit at all, that the fact that, uh, you know, there aren't, there are more, there are a lot of vacancies in the state police department, uh, and I'm sure on other, like local police agencies as well. I mean, I've heard that's a recurring theme. Is that a part of this? study at all? Yeah, it's certainly a strain not to have enough officers um, and troopers. Um, our membership is having a, you know, a difficult time keeping up with uh, call demands and working extra hours. Uh, and obviously that impacts to uh, the frequency and amount of more vehicle stops we can make. Uh, but I don't know the data as far as um, how less more vehicle stops has impacted safety or not, so I can't speak on that. Um, I'm just wondering then, kind of, what what are the next steps then? Once you once you've completed all five of these sessions that you're going to be having, the next one up in Brookfield, um, what happens then? Uh, is there a report that's going to be prepared or? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So the working group is uh, has is drafting recommendations and will include the community input that we get, and then we'll submit the report to the legislature for the first leader. Okay. Another really important part is we're still seeking that feedback and whether it's in these forums in person or if it's contributing online, we also have a form to collect that information. So sharing that information on the form so we can continue to get more uh, feedback would be a great help for us. I think what's hard about this is that we're looking at traffic laws and most people think when they think traffic laws, they think, oh, my experience with this person. And so one of the things we've really been trying to do is make it so that people could start to look at what are some of the laws that you've come into contact with and how have they uh, affected you in your life um, in addition to that other really rich information about what happens during traffic stops. So I feel like, you know, this working group has done a really good job. I mean, you've been working together almost 18 months trying to get a lot of information um, from different sources, from experts, from looking at your your um, already collected traffic stop data, those uh, everything. And now this last piece is, what is the community experience? So the list of recommendations that they're gonna put forth really is triangulated data <laughs> if you're into research, right? So they've got so many data points here. One of the things I was really kind of interested in and facilitating was watching how people talked about both their experience with uh, interactions their experiences with the laws, but then looking at the system and like, are there, is there a greater need for different types of systems of support and accountability for those who enforce the law and those who are coming into contact with it as motorists? Um, I thought that, that was, that's been really impressive to me, facilitating and watching these folks work. I think another piece of this um, is that we've tried to treat this like a bi-directional uh, information sharing. So. You know, I'm thinking back to the conversation that we had about air pollution, noise pollution mm -hmm. with mufflers and how that was an opportunity for us to say, um, this is what you may not know about loud mufflers. A, some of them are coming right off the factory assembly line that way. They're tested in, um, Paul, what was the language you use? Noise neutral or sound neutral environments, right? I mean, I came away learning a lot about it too. And I think that um, just giving an opportunity for people to actually not just not just tell us what laws are and aren't working for them, but also understand why they are the way that they are. We had some folks who said, why don't we do anything about um, high beams at night? Yeah. And, um, and, and that was an opportunity for a lot of us also to learn, hey, there's actually nothing on the books that talks about that. Right. Um, which, you know, later on, again, when we talk about synthesizing our, the feedback into a report, it's going to lead us to think about things like, well, what if we consider people who may be visually impaired, people living with disabilities, right? And sort of the, the bigger question of inclusion. Um, so I, it's, we're near the end of our report, but by no means, I think, is this work really that complete because um, there's a lot to, to think about. The feedback the members of the group heard over the course of their five sessions will be gathered into a report. If you weren't able to attend one of the meetings or didn't hear about it in time, you can still offer some input. Go to the website racialequity.vermont.gov backslash traffic statute review community engagement and scroll down to the link to the online feedback form. For the GNAT TV News Project, 
I'm Andrew McKeever.